See, you can't function with another person if you're not functioning and having that intimate time with yes, God. Yes. You had that time before you got married mm -hmm. and you have to continue to have that time. Yes. You can't lose yourself mm -hmm. in your in your, in your your marriage, mm -hmm. in your spouse. Yeah. God still wants you to have that personal relationship with him mm -hmm. because if I'm not spending quality time mm -hmm. with God, how am I gonna right. treat her? Yeah. Marriage Reloaded, how to restore intimacy, starts now. Good evening. Good evening. And we want to welcome you again to the Marriage Reloaded podcast. Uh, how, how are you feeling tonight, honey? I'm wonderful. How are you? All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm feeling well. I'm feeling great. Mm -hmm. And I'm, we're glad to be with you tonight. And so we want you to just go ahead and gather around your couch or wherever you are and just go ahead and tune in with us. Yes. Sit down, you know, go ahead and get your spouse and you guys can sit down and just have a, a wonderful time with us. Yes. Before we get started, we would just want to remind you to subscribe to the to the page and like, like and subscribe so that you can be in tune whenever whenever we uh, share this podcast mm -hmm. or when, whenever there's a message being shared mm -hmm. on the Kingdom Rock Network. And share. And, and so we want to thank you for just tuning in with us tonight. As always, we want to open up in a word of prayer. We're mm -hmm. glad to be with you tonight. Yes. And so, honey, you want to open us up? Sure. All right. All right. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to give your name glory on the marriage podcast, oh God. We thank you, Father God, that someone will get something from this podcast, Lord Jesus. We ask, oh God, that you would touch each and every heart that is tuned in and Lord, bless their marriages. Bless those that are getting married, Lord God. We thank you, God. We need you, Holy Spirit, so that we can share freely and allow you to reveal yourself. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. And so the last time we were uh, with you, we, you know, we've been on a series uh, talking about communication, intimacy and money. Yes. Haven't gotten to money yet, but we all we talked about communication. Now mm -hmm. we're on intimacy. So we want to uh, continue to talk about intimacy mm -hmm. uh, tonight. As as the last time, you know, we talked about how intimacy is when you can see into your spouse, when mm -hmm. you can understand your spouse, understanding them being able to see their heart. Mm -hmm. It's not just what you do in the bedroom, mm -hmm. but it's what you do outside the bedroom that yes. enhances That's right. what happens in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, one of the things that we talked about that we wanted to discuss tonight is we want, one of the statements that we wrote down is this, is that until I can share the broken part mm. of me with you, we really haven't become intimate. Mm. I have to be able to share the broken part of me with you. Mm. Some, a lot of people in marriages are broken, mm -hmm. but can they really share mm -hmm. with their spouse yeah. that brokenness? Yeah. And so what do you think about that? I think that um, it might not be the case with everyone. Not everybody. Um, and I believe that the brokenness is necessary to be able to share with your spouse, but you must know that it's a safe place. I can't give you my brokenness and you're gonna take it and throw it back up in my face. Right. And yeah. so we have done that in the past. Yes. You know, we've taken some of the things that we, uh, the person has told us, that was intimate and, and misused it. <laughs> and so it's important. Oh, he's laughing. <laughs> he is his mind. <laughs> but we've misused it. And we have to learn from that because what we do is injure the person and then there's not a safe place and the trust level in that area hurts. So we must have that. That is like a prerequisite for the heart being shared. We must establish that I need a safe place and you're not going to hurt me. Yeah. We got through it, though. Yeah, we, we got did. through it. I mean, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's it's very that's very very telling mm -hmm. um, because you don't want to be have to be a, you know you're telling somebody something and like I said I've done I've, I'm guilty of it. Mm -hmm. Somebody tells you something very very personal about mm -hmm. them. Your spouse shares something with you that happened to them, mm -hmm. and then when you get in an argument, yeah, it becomes a weapon. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, you're pulling mm -hmm. out the weapon now. Yes. It, first, it was something precious that they shared with you in yes, the moment that yes. they wanted to be vulnerable with you. Yes. And all of a sudden, now that you're angry, oh, you're a, yeah, remember your mama this or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so you gotta be very careful that you don't take 
your, what your, what your spouse and what they've shared with you, that mm -hmm. vulnerability with you and use it against them because you're angry. Yes. You know, and that's what happens a lot of times. And so we don't want to, one of the things that we want, that, that we don't want to do because mm -hmm. this becomes a block in the intimacy mm -hmm. is that we don't want to tear each other down yeah. in the marriage. Mm -hmm. So many times we tear each other down because oh, yeah. we're angry and we're mm -hmm. upset because that person said something or did something or said something in a certain mm -hmm. way. And then we got offended. This happens with us yep. before. And now we're, instead of us focusing on the problem, yeah. the issue that we're supposed to have a discussion about, we're talking about the person. Yep. And so we both have done that to one I'm another. I'm guilty. We're I know. working through those things. Yes. Stay yes. focused on the problem. Mm -hmm. Don't tear down that person's character. Yes. But focus on the issue at hand. Yeah. And so that's what's going to be able to help you to become more intimate and understand one another. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's very, very, very important. Very. Uh, one of the things, also, things that we also said is intimacy and communication are connected. Oh, yes. You can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. So you got to be able, that's why we're talking about communication, intimacy, and money. Yes. You got to be able to communicate with that person. Yes. You got to have discussions. You got to mm -hmm. talk. You got to be able to go out. Sometimes I see people when we go out to restaurants and they're sitting together at the table and they're, they're, they're not saying a word. Yes. You know, yes. I see people riding in the car sometimes down the highway and they just riding in the car, just looking straight ahead. And I'm mm -hmm. like wondering to myself now, are they connected? Are yes. they really intimate? You know what I mean? Right. So right. we have to be able to. I love the fact that my wife and I we we have laughs together. Yeah. She you know she can she can she says a lot of funny stuff all the time, mm -hmm. and so we'll just be laugh. We'll be in the house laughing about stuff. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. In the morning time, we'll when we wake up in the morning. This is part of intimacy. Yes. We're waking up in the morning. When she wakes up and I wake up and we're both laying in the bed. Mm -hmm. You know what we do up many times? We say, man, I had a dream. Yes. And we share we share the drink, our dreams with mm -hmm. one another. You know, I dreamed about this this morning yeah. or that this morning. We, yep. we just did that this morning. Yeah. You know, that little time of sharing in the dreams mm -hmm. in the morning, that's intimacy. Yes. Even, before, you know, it's called pillow talk. Yeah. You know, before mm -hmm. we go to bed at night many times. Yeah. We'll just be laying there and then we'll talk about things. Mm -hmm. Talk about some of the things that we want to do. Talk about the things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. Some of our goals and our dreams. Yes. We talk about our children. We're talking mm -hmm. about life. Yeah. So you got to communicate with one another. You yes. got to have conversation, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what makes it. That's what makes makes the intimacy grow. Yes. That's what makes it tighter. Yeah. We, we need to be able to communicate with each other because when you love that person, um, you you just they become your best friend, so to speak. Uh, you, I believe it's healthy for women to have friends outside of your marriage. It's healthy, but I believe that your spouse is the person that's closest to you. I've laid in the bed with my husband and been with my husband more than I have been in my mom's house. You know, there's a song they say, "Close to me, you like my mother. Close to me, you like my father. Close to me, you like my sister." You, that's the closest thing to you, mm -hmm. and so you have to be able to uh, communicate with each other, trust each other, love each other. It's important mm -hmm. that we have this intimacy and this talk. Yeah. It, do you want me to share what I was going to share? Uh, you want to share it now? I mean, I can. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I I told my husband I'm in school for marriage and family counseling. And I told my husband, I said, I'm, I'm, I had to read this story about a gentleman that lost his, his, his memory and he was married. And thank God that his wife was just there for him. Um, and one of the nurses asked the wife, she said, uh, uh, is it like having a child? She said, no, I, I understand that he's my husband, but he couldn't do anything. He had a memory problem and he, would, he couldn't remember from one second to the other. So he would try to, the only thing he could do is probably play the piano effortlessly, and then he would see her and remember her. She, those are the only two things that he could remember for a second to second. So long story short, I said to my husband, you have to have the right spouse to be in your life because most people will check out. Now this woman did admit that she really wanted to just leave him at one point because it was a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. She's trying to have him nurtured back to life and going through things, but he lost his memory. Mm -hmm. She was there and she's continuously to still be there. He's still alive, but you have to have the right spouse. For those single people, you need to think about that. The right person in your life, are you going to abandon ship if something happens to your spouse where they cannot think anymore for themselves, where they cannot be the person that you married. That is so important. 
That's a part of intimacy. This woman got her husband in a facility. They took care of him. He recognized her because she stood there and loved on him and continued to visit him all the time. So when she came in the door, it was like a party was being thrown. Oh, my wife, my wife. But amazingly to me, he could only remember his wife and how to play music. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's good. I mm -hmm. mean, because you have to, you know, when you take those vows. Oh, yes. You better know mm -hmm. that who you're taking those vows with is somebody yes. that you're going to be with through no, no matter what you have, what you go through in yes. life. That's what real marriage is all about. Mm -hmm. It's not for children. It's for grown ups. It's for grown ups. You got to be with somebody no matter what. You know, they're going to change at some point. They're going to get older. You know what I'm saying? Yep. All, we all are changing yes. constantly. You understand? Yes. And so I love when I see two people together and you say they say they've been together 50 years yes. and 60 years. It's like, wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's, yes. a, that's a lifetime of love. That's a lifetime of commitment. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it was easy. Yes. They made a commitment to mm -hmm. one another that they were going to be there for one another. Yes. And, and those are the best stories that you hear. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. um, we just want to continue to encourage, encourage you in this in this intimacy mm -hmm. to just grow closer to one another. Yes. To just share with one another, mm -hmm. to just be able to communicate with one another, yeah. to, to be able to, to see your spouses even in, in their flaws. Yes. To be able to say, you know what, even though I see your flaws, mm -hmm. I still love you. Yeah. You know, I think part of being intimacy is uh, even in Corinthians chapter 13, where it says love is patient. Mm. Love is kind. Mm. You know, it's not rude. Yes. It tells you what love really is. That's mm -hmm. what really intimacy is being is about. Yes. It's, hey, I got to be patient with yes. my wife. There's sometimes I know uh, I get on her <laughs> nerves. I'm just telling you. <laughs> And I can tell you that there's sometimes yeah. that she gets on my nerves. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, Lord, let me just take a break. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. You know, you need yes. those breaks sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. I need to get by myself. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, it, like my, my wife said last time on the show, is that you need to have that me time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to have time where yeah. you can go and spend some time alone by yourself, mm -hmm. where you can get some time where you can go. She goes to get her hair done and she goes to get her nails done or mm -hmm. she goes to get her feet done, mm -hmm. have that time. And sometimes we go together to get our feet done, mm -hmm. but there's times we need, she needs her alone time. Yes. She needs time alone with, the, with God mm -hmm. so he can restore her, so mm -hmm. he can pour into her. Yeah. Everybody needs that time mm -hmm. alone where they can get poured into. Yes. See, you can't function with another person if you're not functioning and having that intimate time with yes. God. Yes. You had that time before you got married mm -hmm. and you have to continue to have that time. Yes. You can't lose yourself mm -hmm. in your, in your, in your marriage, mm -hmm. in your spouse. Yeah. God still wants you to have that personal relationship with him mm -hmm. because if I'm not spending quality time mm -hmm. with God, how am I going right. to treat her? Yeah. I need to make sure that I'm spending intimate time with the Lord yes. and enjoying that time with him, with yeah. me and him being one-on-one. -on -one. Then when I get ready to, love on my wife. Mm -hmm. I can do it the right way. Yeah. I can be patient with her. Yes. I can love on her. Mm -hmm. I can serve her yep. because that's what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's here to do for me. Yes. But this is not some one way street. Yeah. This is a two way thing. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy, I, I'm able to be patient. I'm able to enjoy this thing. I'm yeah. able to enjoy the journey every day yeah. because of the simple fact I have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Some of us we, 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 we get married at the altar and we, you know, we make that covenant at the altar. And then as soon as we leave that altar, mm -hmm. we say, well, God, thank you. And we don't even, God's not in it anymore. Yeah. We just try to start trying to handle it on our own. Mm -hmm. And then our intimacy, our communication, our money, all of that stuff mm -hmm. begins to be broken up and, and crushed yes. because we, 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 we didn't keep God in it. Right. With God in it, you're going to win it. Mm -hmm. Without right. God. You're going to struggle. Yes. You're going to be fussing. You're going to mm. be, you know, fighting. You're going to be at odds with one another. You're going to grow apart if you don't get God in it. Yes. And I can promise you, my friends, and we can tell you we're a living testimony mm -hmm. because we went through some tough times in our marriage. It's mm. all here in this book. Mm -hmm. But God, by the grace of God. Oh, yes. And by his mercy, mm -hmm. he brought us through it. And that's why we're here to encourage you yes. on this evening. Yeah, you said a mouthful because with God in it, you can win it. Without God in it, it's like you're living on the surface level. You never go deep. 
you never get the real riches in your marriage. You yeah. never get the realness of the sweetness of the honey that's inside of the marriage. This is my honey. But without God, we can't get to where we need to be. We can't even understand who we are as a woman, who we are without God. God is, he's so awesome and so massive. He reveals himself within us. When we spend time with God and we become intimate with God, then we know how to learn. We know how to love and give back and nurture. So then we can do some intimacy. Mm -hmm. I can't give you, my husband could tell you in the beginning of our marriage, I was like the dude in the marriage. I was, <laughs> I was turning over like, you know, like, okay, this is just it. You know, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but <laughs> I was just not connected emotionally because I needed to be transformed from the inside out. I was used to the worldly way of doing things. So when I came in, God, he had to work through me so that we can get past all of the stuff that I brought into the marriage, all of the baggage. I didn't know how to love. He showed me how to be more intimate and more vulnerable. But God had to soften me first as a woman. I needed to know how to be a woman that trusts again. You know, and so we went through some things, but it didn't change who I was. God changed who I was. So over time, I became this woman. This didn't happen overnight. So for us to become intimate, I had to do some real hard work. I had to work on me first. Mm -hmm. I could not put this on him. He yeah. could not give me what I needed. I'm sorry. God mm -hmm. had to do that first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because. You know, uh, you know, we we've heard people say this, you know, in, in their wedding vows, you complete me. Mm. But really, you should come into the marriage already being complete. Mm. And then it's two whole. It's not two halves coming together, mm. as you heard it said, to make a whole. It's two holes coming together to make a greater whole. Yes. The two become one. Mm -hmm. But God wants you to be whole before you get married. Yeah. If you're all, if you're thinking you're, you're looking to find somebody to make you whole, you know, that's not what God wants. God yeah. wants you to be whole with him. Mm -hmm. And then when you come and you find that spouse, you're greater whole together. Yes. Greater together. Mm -hmm. And that's what God wants. And that's what real intimacy is. You know, there's a spiritual connection that happens when two people come together who really love each other, mm -hmm. who appreciate one another, who have respect for one another, because yes. it's important to have respect for one another. Mm -hmm. When we first met, God connected us spiritually. Yes, he and did. I believe that that spiritual connection that God brought between us, mm -hmm. it has been what has held our marriage yes. together for all of these years. Mm -hmm. You know, even when we went through tough times, because everybody goes through tough times. Mm -hmm. But if you have that, that spiritual connection, mm -hmm. as we said before, if you're praying together, if you're spending time together, if you're showing appreciation for one another, mm -hmm. if you're loving on one another and you're doing all those things, and if you're even, one of the things, and this was on my heart, uh, if you, you have to be able to forgive one another. Oh my goodness. You know, we could go on one whole Ooh. show just talking about forgiveness. Oh man. Some of you, you know, you're in this, you, you've been in this marriage and your, your spouse did something, they offended you, they hurt you in some type of way, yes. whoever knows what that was. But ever since that time has happened, you just held on to that yeah. thing that they've done mm -hmm. to you. And you're still in the marriage and you just, you're just going from day to day, just kind of dwelling in the house together. Mm. You're not even connected anymore yes. because you won't forgive one another. Mm -hmm. But God, the Lord said in his word, if you don't forgive, uh, if you don't, if you don't forgive uh, one another, he said, I can't forgive you. Mm -hmm. So you got to forgive that person. You got to let that thing go yes. and, 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 and let it go as if it never happened. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you're going to forget it, but at least you can let it go so that you can move on and allow healing yes. to come in your marriage. Mm -hmm. God wants healing to come in your marriage. Yes. He wants intimacy to come in your marriage again. Mm -hmm. He wants communication mm -hmm. to come again in your marriage. So you got to let go of that pain that has come into mm -hmm. your relationship yes. so that you can be whole again. And a lot of times betrayal is one of the main things that happens in marriages. You know, if, if you feel betrayed, uh, you know, you're going to feel like I can't be with this person. But a lot of times God uses things for us to either mature, to grow, to get out of, or to grow through that thing. 
betrayal in marriage is one of the things that hurts the very most. Now, everybody's betrayal is different. I'm not talking about uh, someone's just walking out cheating on you because that happens also. But when a person betrays your confidence in them, you have to be able to forgive at some point mm -hmm. in your life because for, unforgiveness is like a slow death. It is. And it's poison. It's like poisoning yourself. So when you are working through the unforgiveness to get to the intimacy, because you cannot be intimate, you can have SEX, sex, mm -hmm. but you cannot be intimate. You cannot see inside of intimacy, you see if I'm still angry with you, if I'm yeah. still walking around with unforgiveness, you can do the act of intimacy, mm -hmm. but you will not be able to penetrate the heart of the person. So forgiveness frees you. Mm -hmm. It helps you get whole. Yes. And you cannot do that on your own. You have to have the God factor. Speak you must have it. That's you must have it. I had to deal with it. I had to deal with it, not just with my husband, with people that have hurt me. Your spouse hurts you sometimes and you have to forgive. Now, I'm not talking about beating. I'm not talking about cheating. You deal with cheating however you want to do. If someone's beating on you, you leave. But you have to be able to deal with some things and it takes time, but you must forgive so that you can be healed. Yes, mm -hmm. that's good. That's that 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 is definitely so true, mm -hmm. you know. And I and we just we we want for you, mm -hmm. as a as couples to thrive. Yes, we want you to thrive in your marriages, mm -hmm. in your relationships. Yes. We want to encourage you tonight to let you know that you can make it. Yes, but you have to come up with a game plan yes. on how you're going to get back mm -hmm. to that place that God wants your marriage to be. Yes. And the way to get back to that place is to continue to work on your marriage. Yes. You got to put time into it. You got to yes. be intentional about your marriage. Mm -hmm. You got to take time to spend with one another so that you can grow mm -hmm. and you can thrive in this thing. Yes. You can have a good marriage and you can have a great marriage. Yes. But it has to be work put in. Yes. Whatever it takes, getting some counseling mm -hmm. yes. or just making sure that you guys sit down and come together and, mm -hmm. and work on your marriage. Mm -hmm. And so we want to... Uh, we want to just we want to we, we're so grateful to you yes. tonight for being able to tune in with yes. us and we and we and we know that god is going to continue to do some great things in your mm -hmm. life we want to encourage you tonight again we have our our, our workbook this mm -hmm. workbook so that you can assess your marriage and see oh, where yes. your marriage is mm -hmm. so that you can continue to grow in your marriage and we also have our book yes. if you want to know our story and know how God brought us over. Yes. It's all in this book. And you can get them as a combo on our website yes. at marriagereloadedllc.com. Yes. So we want to thank you again thank for you. tuning in with us tonight. We're going to see you again at another time. Mm -hmm. And, and we're, going to, we're going to start on talking about money. Yes. Money, 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 money. Mm -hmm. Because money is a very, very uh, something that a lot of couples have issues with. Mm -hmm. And so we want to discuss this money and get this money, get your money right. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to have your communication right. Mm -hmm. You're going to have your intimacy right. And then when you, when you get your money right, it's all going to be tight. Yes. So, all right. He got some sense. <laughs> tight, so we right? Want to thank you again for tuning in with us tonight. Yes. And we love you. We thank God for yes. you. Yes. And we will see you on the next time on the Marriage Reloaded Podcast. Podcast. See you next time. See you next time. Thank you.